Welcome to a new series which we have, which is talking all about owners' reviews. Now, you've seen myself and my friend and colleague Richard on here talking about other people's watches endlessly. Um, but one thing we don't do that often is talk about our own. Um, so what I'd like to introduce you to today is my Grand Seiko. I absolutely love it. Now, there's only one thing I don't really like about it, and that is the name. It's got such an unintuitive name that I'm even going to have to look it up. Welcome to the Grand Seiko SBG P005G. That's a slightly uninspired name for what is a truly beautiful watch. How I like to refer to it, it's the Grand Seiko Heritage Quartz 40mm watch. Yes, you heard it right, quartz. It's not such a dirty word. It's time for sort of quartz watches to be realized uh, for what they are, um, superb pieces of engineering, particularly when they're made by Grand Seiko. Because what I can't get across effectively enough is just how good and solid the engineering on this watch is. Now, it means a lot to me. It was a, I've had it for just over a year and a half. It was a, a Christmas present and it's a watch that you know, it's probably almost my go-to watch. I don't quite wear it every day, but I'm getting on for it. Why is that? Because it just does everything you want to do. Look at it, it is so versatile. Um, you've got this really interesting sort of interplay of straight lines and curves, and that gives it a sort of vintage look, but at the same time, quite contemporary. So it doesn't look like a watch from years and years ago, but it's definitely got a vintage nod to it. And I don't think I've ever come across another watch, with the possible exception of the Rolex Explorer 1, which is so simple, so clear and so perfect. This is perfection in a steel package. All sorts of things I like about it. Um, the way that, for example, uh, the, the indices line up with the, the hour market is our markers are just just perfect um, the way it's so beautifully polished that it's abundantly clear in any conditions whenever time you look at it you know you know that it's it's just instantly legible and the fact that it is just so well put together uh, the shapes are very classical what I love maybe most of all is the dial now I don't know if you can see but you've got this sort of sunburst dial which is sort of part blue part black um, it just comes together in a very, very uh, striking way, a coherent way. Apparently quite hard to photograph, but trust me, the, the reality is, is, is better than what it seems uh, on film. The hands, too, are a particular product of their time. Um, just very, very legible, dagger hands um, and typically Grand Seiko. I mentioned the engineering before, but look at the way the sort of the buckle and clasp was put together. It's so easy. I don't know if you can hear, but look, isn't that one of the most satisfying clicks that you've ever heard in the watch? This watch, look at it from the side. It's slim, so it can sort of like fit all sorts of functions. Now, you look at it and you think, hmm, steel sports watch, which partially it is, but you know, I think you'd also argue that it's a dress watch too. You could wear it with a suit, you can wear it with, um, just what I'm wearing now. Um, it's a watch which genuinely goes with any occasion. And, you know, it is slim enough to sort of slip under a cuff as well. So um, really, you know, um, there are very few circumstances under which this watch is not just the ideal tool for the job. Japanese engineering needs no introduction from me. It's, it's, it's the best in the world. Um, reliability in this is stunning. Um, thanks to that quartz movement, which I mentioned, it's a new quartz movement, or was new when this watch first came out. The the timekeeping is is astonishing. Um, I forget the exact figure, but it really is 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 right up there with the industry best. What is there not to like? It's everything you would want in a watch. It keeps perfect time. It looks good. It feels good. It wears beautifully on your wrist. It's not even you know for what you get. It's it's it's, it's not even too expensive. Like I said, sort of. Uh, this was a present, so um, I've got a rough idea how much it is. I think it's probably about £3,000, something like that. But, you know, if you don't want to stretch to that, you can actually have the same sort of Japanese engineering and the same sort of vibe in this. Look at this. This is one I found earlier in the office. This is a Seiko Pressage. Now, um, Grand Seiko is, 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 is the prestige arm of, um, of Seiko. Um, you, you could almost consider it maybe um, 
the difference between Tudor and Rolex, or if we want to use a if we want to use a Japanese analogy, the difference between Toyota and Lexus. One is um, a luxury brand, uh, the other is is more day to day, but both are supremely good watches. It's quite interesting actually seeing the two of these together, because whilst the sort of Seiko, the one here in my left hand with the white dial, is 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 heavier and thicker, and you know you can see it's not as refined. It has got a lot of the same sort of DNA. Um, beautiful, beautiful watch. Um, very different, uh, uh, very different sort of uh, styles, movements. Look, there's a display case back on, on this one as well. But the Seiko here is a lot cheaper, and for some people that might be the one to go for. Um, Grand Seiko here is a lot lighter, um, I think a lot more engineered, but who would not be happy to have this watch too? So both from Seiko, and both incredibly well made, and I think both go to show that Japanese watches should really not be overlooked. There's a, a, a lot of sort of like, you know, focus obviously on, on, on Swiss and French and even British brands now, but let's not forget which are some of the best watches in the world. And I think these ones are really, really nice to see the two of these together. But I'm going to put the Seiko Pressage back in its box and I'm going to take back my own Grand Seiko because that is the watch for me. What do I enjoy about the ownership experience of this Grand Seiko? Pretty much everything, but I think it's just the sort of like the ease and comfort that it slips into your life. And I like the fact that it's not a big label. I mean, a Grand Seiko is a prestigious watch, but really only amongst those who are in the know. Most of the time, this passes completely under the radar, and I like that too. Um, it feels a little bit like, you know, being the, the keeper of a bit of a secret. And that's actually how I feel wearing this watch, that no one, apart from those who know, no one really knows what it is. I absolutely love that. And of course, I, I love the fact that um, this is a quartz watch. So not only does it sort of, you don't have to bother sort of wearing it or winding it or whatever if you don't want to, but it also um, ruffles the feathers of a few traditionalists. And to my mind, that's always quite a good thing. Um, so it's quite interesting. It's a subtle way to be controversial, isn't it, wearing this watch? And that's one of the reasons why I quite like it. Um, in fact, I like it very much. And in fact, it's going to be one of these watches which is with me forever. So that's my unashamedly biased owner's review. Um, for those who haven't got the Grand Seiko, for those who've, uh, you know, not really looked into this brand enough, I, I recommend you do because it is, you know, well, I would argue probably in many cases better than Swiss quality at a price which is still a fraction of it. And of course, these are all pretty much instantly available. You can walk into a Grand Seiko shop and, and come out with one of these, uh, which is remarkable. Is this the best value watch currently on sale today? I'm going to stick out my neck and say yes. That's another reason why I like it too. It's a very, very clever place to put your money. So yeah, it comes down to one thing. What is there not to like? And I can't think of a single thing apart from that rather silly name.